Procurement Act 2023, Knowledge Shop Series for SME and VCSE Suppliers, Part 3 of 3. In Part 3 of this Knowledge Shop Series, we will cover changes to the supplier exclusion regime, how the debarment list will work, changes to how contracts are awarded and managed, why the commitments surrounding prompt payment, the Act's transparency ambition and notice publication requirements, the role that the Procurement Review Unit will play in improving compliance with the legal regime, the steps you can take to help prepare your organisation for these changes. Exclusions The exclusions regime is designed to protect contracts and authorities and the public from certain risks posed by suppliers who have been convicted of specific offences or have committed certain types of misconduct or who may be in circumstances that are incompatible with the delivery of public contracts. The Procurement Act retains the concept of mandatory and discretionary grounds under which a supplier must or may be excluded from taking part in a procurement process or have their tender disregarded. These incorporate some more detailed grounds to improve clarity, some stronger grounds and some new grounds. Individual contracts and authorities will need to consider whether an exclusion ground applies and if so, then the supplier must be given the opportunity to demonstrate that the circumstances given rise to the exclusion ground are not likely to occur again, self-cleaning. This process is now more flexible as contracts and authorities can take into account a broader range of evidence, such as the steps taken to remedy the situation. For example, by changing staff or compliance practices and action to prevent further occurrence, such as providing training to staff, together with time elapsed. Misconduct by individuals and organisations who are connected with a supplier, known as connected persons, can mean that a supplier is subject to potential exclusion. Connected persons include those who can or do exercise significant influence or control over the supplier including, for example, those with a significant control within the meaning of the Companies Act 2006. Directors and shadow directors and parent companies, as well as those over whom the supplier exercises significant influence or control, including, for example, subsidiary companies. Predecessor companies, which cease to trade but have been resurrected as a supplier, where the supplier is a so-called Phoenix company, are also connected persons. This means that suppliers cannot avoid potential exclusion by tendering through a subsidiary or by dissolving and reforming under a different name. If you are submitting a tender and relying on another person or supplier to satisfy any of the contracts and authorities conditions of participation, then you could be excluded if an exclusion ground appears to that other person or supplier, known as an associated person if this occurs, then you are entitled to be given a reasonable opportunity by the contractor and authority prior to any exclusion taking place to replace this associated person with an alternative supplier. Contracts and authorities must ask for information about subcontractors that you intend to use to deliver the contract and can consider whether the exclusion grounds apply in respect of any subcontractors. As with associated persons, you are entitled to be given a reasonable opportunity by the contractor authority prior to any exclusion taking place to replace a subcontractor with an alternative supplier. It is equally important to consider both of these provisions if you are acting as a named subcontractor for a supplier or if you are being relied upon by another supplier to satisfy conditions of participation as part of a procurement procedure. These provisions apply in the same way to overseas suppliers and their connected persons, associated persons and subcontractors as to UK suppliers. Debarment. The Procurement Act includes a new provision for a debarment list of suppliers. The debarment list will set out very clearly which suppliers must and which suppliers may be excluded from procurements. A supplier can be added to the list by a Minister of the Crown if, following a debarment investigation, it is found that an exclusion ground applies and the supplier has not been able to produce sufficient self-cleaning evidence. Investigations can be undertaken by Ministers of the Crown, Welsh Ministers or a Northern Ireland Department. 
Where the investigation is undertaken by a Minister of the Crown, it will be managed in most cases by the Procurement Review Unit in the Cabinet Office. Reports must be made of any investigation and, other than for national security reasons, or to protect sensitive commercial information, must be provided to the supplier and published. The debarment list will be a published list of suppliers and appearing on the list means that a contracting authority must if you are subject to a ground for mandatory exclusion or may if you are subject to a discretionary exclusion exclude you from their procurements. The list will be kept under review and amendments made where appropriate. Suppliers will be entitled to apply to have their name removed from the list at any time. Requests will only be considered if there has been a material change of circumstance or the supplier can demonstrate new self-cleaning evidence, e.g. where a conviction or ruling has been overturned, a director or beneficial owner has left their position or where new processes have been put in place. Suppliers might also appeal against the decision to enter their name on the list or against a failure to remove it following an application to do so. Any appeals against the decision should be made to the High Court in England, Wales and Northern Ireland or the Court of Session in Scotland within the time period for bringing an appeal. Suppliers can also apply for the debarment decision to be temporarily suspended while an appeal is ongoing. The list will help contracting authorities to exploit exclusion grounds consistently and navigate the mandatory and discretionary exclusion stage of their procurements. But it does not replace the exclusions regime part of the procurement process. On the face of it, the changes around debarment may not seem advantageous for suppliers. However, the list is designed to ensure that public money is only given to suppliers that are fit and proper to deliver public contracts. You will also be able to view the debarment list when making decisions around your supply chain. A change in award procedures. As a supplier, you may notice a difference in the feedback you receive from a contracting authority if your tender is unsuccessful. Under the new rules, you will be provided with an assessment summary that details the outcome of the assessment of your tender against the award criteria and also the winning supplier's assessment summary with commercially sensitive information redacted. This is designed to avoid after the event artificial comparisons while still providing sufficient information so that you can ascertain the relative advantages of your tender. This will help you to understand why you missed out on the opportunity and will include rationale as to why you and the winning supplier have been awarded particular scores helping to identify areas to improve on in the future. Assessment summaries may be accompanied by additional feedback and relevant information, which could be written or verbal, and not necessarily linked to the award criteria, which may help you refine further tender submissions. There is an additional step in the contract award process, requiring a contract award notice to be published after assessment summaries are issued, signalling the intent to award a contract. This will usually mark the beginning of an eight working day standstill period, previously 10 calendar days, that must be observed before a contract can be entered into. After the standstill has concluded, contracts and authorities must publish a contract details notice confirming details of the contract award, including for most contracts with a total value of over five million pounds copies of the contract redacted as required to protect your commercially sensitive information. More effective contract management. The Procurement Act also sets out additional transparency requirements following contract award and throughout the duration of the contract delivery. This represents an opportunity for contracts and authorities to improve contract management practice in collaboration with their suppliers to ensure that these requirements can be delivered. The new requirements include for individual contracts with a total estimated value of more than £5 million, contracts and authorities must agree with their suppliers at least three key performance indicators, KPIs, selecting those that are the most important to contract delivery, and publish information about supplier performance against the selected KPIs at least once a year for the lifetime of the contract, 
guidance will support contracts and authorities to do this. Where they are required, contract change notices must be published before a contract is amended. Publishing details where a breach of contract or persistent poor performance under a contract has taken place, with you first being given a proper opportunity to improve performance. Recording and publishing details about contract spend of more than £30,000 and publishing a contract termination notice wherever a contract comes to an end, whether through natural expiry, completion of deliverables or termination, etc. Regarding what data is considered for publication, only data which would be required to be made available under Freedom of Information, Data Protection and other relevant legislation will be publishable, so your confidential and commercially sensitive information will remain secure. The government is publishing guidance to contracts and authorities on what is considered non-disclosable information, including, for example, profit margins or elements of the winning tender which reveal innovative or unique technical solutions and methodologies. Wider commitments on prompt payment. The government recognises the problems that late payment of invoices can cause for business stability, growth and forward planning particularly for SMEs and VCSEs. To support prompt payment specifically within the public sector, the Procurement Act will extend current provisions by ensuring that 30-day payment terms are automatically passed down a wider range of public sector supply chains in the UK to primary suppliers and their subcontractors, regardless of whether they are written into a contract. SMEs and VCSEs will benefit from 30-day payment terms where they are in the supply chain across a much broader range of public sector contracts, increasing the current scope to include those in the public utilities and defence sectors. The effect of implying 30-day terms into every public subcontract is that you will be entitled to claim late payment interest wherever they are not paid in 30 days. Public sector payment reporting will be aligned with the private sector to allow comparison of how quickly different organisations pay their suppliers. There will also be a more centralised approach to publishing payment performance data to help hold public bodies to account on their payment practices. More flexibility in making contract amendments. The Procurement Act provides new grounds under which contracts can be amended, including to cover scenarios such as urgency and the protection of life and to address complex risks that genuinely cannot be mitigated against in advance of a contract. The Act also provides grounds to permit the modification of Defence Authority contracts. All of the amendment grounds from the previous regulations have been retained, but with changes that are designed to make processes clearer and more flexible when a contract modification is required. There are still strict rules about where contracts may be modified and when a new procurement will be required. This is beneficial for suppliers in the event that a re-procurement is genuinely unnecessary in cases where grounds for amendment can be applied, reducing the risk of disruption and contracts being curtailed. Transparency ambition. Transparency has been embedded throughout the Procurement Act and is present across the whole procurement life cycle, from planning through to procurement, contract implementation and finalisation. The central digital platform will house all data and information shared through these notices. The aim is for everyone, contracts and authorities, suppliers and the wider public to be able to view, search and understand what the public, utility and defence sectors are wanting to buy and are in contract for and how much they are spending, increasing visibility, accessibility and accountability for all. The central digital platform has been developed to capture data and information throughout the procurement life cycle, which contracting authorities will provide by publishing a number of different notices from planning to contract expiry. These transparency measures are expected to provide a number of benefits and opportunities, including ensuring tender opportunities are more visible and accessible in one single place, reducing the burden on SMEs and VCSEs of having to look in multiple places for opportunities, helping you to identify new opportunities at an earlier stage through the publication of pipeline notices and plan your resources accordingly, identifying opportunities to take part in pre-market engagement 
which can help inform contracts and authorities approach to the procurement procedure. Reducing the risk of suppliers who offer a lower price but deliver a poor service from winning business because of the visibility of performance information. Ensuring integrity, visibility and accountability throughout the full procurement life cycle. Some exceptions from certain transparency rules apply dependent on the organisation and all the goods, services or works being procured or where publication of information would be contrary to national security or is of a sensitive commercial nature. Information about this will be available in fact sheets on the gov.uk page as previously mentioned. Improved procurement oversight. Ministers, Welsh ministers and Northern Ireland departments now have formal powers to investigate cases of non-compliance with the requirements of the Procurement Act and, where relevant, to make recommendations that will support contracting authorities to improve their practices. This will give suppliers more confidence that poor practices will be identified and resolved. In most cases, this process will be managed by the new Procurement Review Unit, the PRU, in the Cabinet Office. The Procurement Review Unit will deliver three key services. It will encourage compliance with the Procurement Act by monitoring and investigating repeated non-compliance, whether it occurs across a number of contracts and authorities, systematic non-compliance, or in a single contract and authority, institutional non-compliance. It will investigate whether suppliers should be added to the department list by considering whether they have met mandatory or discretionary grounds for exclusion and to ensure adequate service is provided to all suppliers, including SMEs and VCSEs. PRU will continue the work of the Public Procurement Review Service, which investigates poor procurement practice, including in relation to the below threshold procurements and cases of late payment in public sector supply chains. To carry out these services, the PRU will use a range of information from various sources, including any direct complaints or concerns raised by suppliers. What can SMEs and VCSEs do to prepare for the Procurement Act? There are a number of things that you can do to prepare for the Procurement Act. Ensure that you fully understand the main changes as outlined in this knowledge drop. If you are an industry representative body or a member of one, think about how your sector can prepare and identify opportunities for collaboration within supply chains. Register and submit your business information on the central digital platform when it is available. Use procurement pipelines to plan ahead to respond to opportunities as a prime contractor or subcontractor. Establish how your organisation can support any national procurement priorities, e.g. of creating more jobs, upskilling and net zero. Review your organisation and your supply chain to ensure you do not meet any grounds under the new exclusions regime, or consider what steps you may take if you do. Existing procurement processes will remain in place until the Procurement Act goes live, so it may take time to see changes as contracts and authorities begin to publish pipeline notices and details of new procurement opportunities. Where you are delivering a contract, or have a place on a framework agreement, dynamic purchasing system, other qualification system that was procured under the previous regulations. This will remain unchanged until the agreement expires. Given the scale of the change, the Procurement Act will take time to bed in and there may be some areas of uncertainty at first. The best way to help embed the new rules swiftly is for suppliers to work collaboratively alongside contracts and authorities, industry bodies and the Cabinet Office to achieve optimum outcomes. Conclusion. You should now understand key changes under the Procurement Act relating to changes to the supplier exclusion regime, how the debarment list will work, changes to how contracts are awarded and managed, wider commitments surrounding prompt payment, the Act's transparency, ambition and notice publication requirements, the role that the Procurement Review Unit will play in improving compliance with the legal regime, the steps you can take to help prepare your organisation for these changes. The Procurement Act is only the start of achieving great value outcomes for the public, defence and utility sectors, 
and we anticipate that SMEs and VCSEs will play a key role in making this happen. The Procurement Act sets the framework, but it is effective commercial leadership, innovation and capable suppliers that will deliver these outcomes. We also need suppliers to be ready and willing to work with contracting authorities to get the best from the Procurement Act. We anticipate that you may have some additional questions. Further information can be found at Transferring Public Procurement page at gov.uk. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Knowledge Drop series. We hope that you found it useful and informative and you now understand the principal changes and the benefits of the new Procurement Act. This material has been produced for the purpose of learning and development and does not constitute and should not be relied upon as legal advice. This material is accurate as at October 2023. Fact sheets for the following exemptions can be found on gov.uk. Concessions, Light Touch, Defence and Security, Northern Ireland, Wales, Schools, Utilities. End of animation.